Welcome back everybody to our class introduction to quantum optics. Today we want to make a small interlude and discuss the mach zehnder interferometer because we're going to gear up to realizing such an interferometer in the internal state space of our atoms so it's good to remind ourselves what this is actually doing in the case of light fields in optics. I'm sure you've all heard of it and you might have discussed it already in detail but let's, let's take a closer look again one step back for all of us and kind of go through this again. So this is the classical Marcinda setup that people consider. You have light coming in here. There's a 50-50 beam splitter, which is kind of a non-polarizing beam splitter, which splits the light into two paths. One that's propagating along this direction and one that's propagating along this direction. And then there are two mirrors here, for example. The light comes along here, comes again onto a beam splitter, 50-50 beam splitter, where part of the light is transmitted part of the light is reflected, and in this case part of the light reflected, and part of the light transmitted. And now the question is, what are we going to see on detectors that are placed here that measure the intensity of the light coming out here, or the intensity of the light coming out here? Now a naive guess that you might have is that you're just going to see half of the light coming out here and half of the light coming out here, because we're dividing the light into half the intensity in this direction, half the intensity in this direction. Uh, here we're splitting it again, we're adding them up. So you could think that 50% of the light is going to come out here and 50% of the light is going to come out here. But that's not the case. Only in the special case that would be indeed like that. Uh, of course we know that in optics it is a wave mechanic, it's a wave mechanics wave equations and therefore exactly the same what we encounter in quantum mechanics. What we have to add is not the intensities but we have to add the fields and then take the norm square of that to calculate intensities. So in the case of the light field when we have laser light coming in here we split the laser light E0 now into two paths. So now we actually have the light field, the total light field in this interferometer is a superposition of E1 plus E2. Okay, so there's light propagating along this path and light propagating along this path. And then we come to this beam splitter here again and when we calculate the amplitude of the field in this we have to take the field that's coming from here from this direction and the amplitude of the field that's coming along this direction. Those two overlap here, these waves, and so we have to take the sum of them and to calculate the intensity we have to take norm squared of that which gives us the intensity of the light on the detector 1. Or we should better write is proportional to norm E1 plus E2 squared. Now the other case that you could have on detector 2 here, uh, what you're going to measure is the light that's kind of transmitted in this direction and the light propagating along path 2 being reflected here at this beam splitter. And now there's a subtle minus sign that comes into play in this case that we're going to discuss in more detail when we discuss the beam splitter. That's really important. So in this case actually the field that we have on detector 2 is E1 minus E2 and to calculate the intensity we just have to take norm squared of that. So what happens now if we introduce a phase shift between the two paths? So now everything was the same before, but now let's discuss a situation where in path 2 we introduce, for example, a thin glass plate which introduces a phase shift delta phi. So let's imagine this is a glass plate of thickness d with a refractive index n. That's going to lead to a phase shift of the light propagating along this path relative to the light field propagating along this path. So think a moment for yourself, how big is this phase shift actually? Did you get it right? Okay, so in that case we've introduced an additional phase shift for the light field propagating along path 2 and that we have to take into account here. So we now have this additional phase shift showing up in front of this E2 amplitude here and in the minus term again also for detector 2. So if we now plot the output intensity that we expect, let's say I1, as a function of this delta phi, what is that going to be? 
And here's our total light field incoming intensity. Let's say the light field has an incoming intensity I0. So if delta phi is zero, then we're going to have constructive interference of these two waves and all of the light coming out on detector one. Then as we vary delta phi, we're going to get destructive interference, constructive interference, destructive interference, constructive interference as we vary delta phi. So here's the case delta phi being pi, here's delta phi being two pi, here's delta phi being three pi. Okay, so we go from constructive interference to destructive interference to constructive interference. So rather than having 50-50 light output uh, on our two detectors, we encounter we can get all the light coming out on detector one in this case, nor no light coming out on detector one, depending on the phase shift of E1 relative to E2. Now one final question, what would you expect now for the intensity of the light field two. If I plot in my same graph, the intensity hitting my detector two, how should I plot this in this graph? Well, since light intensity, light energy, we have energy conservation, the total intensity of the light field has to be conserved. So if everything is coming out on port one here, then nothing comes out on port uh, two in that case. In the opposite case, when everything's coming out on port two, nothing's out coming out on port one. Okay, so actually you see that the light that we get on output port two, so this would be this would be the light coming out on uh, detector one, and this would be the light coming out on detector two. They're just pi out of phase, and it has to be like that. Those are the two complementary outputs of our interferometer. So you see what makes this interferometer is two input ports, two paths, one and two, where we have a coherent superposition of the fields propagating along those two arms, and we have two output ports to probe the relative phase of those light fields in the interferometer. That's what's crucial about the Mach Zehnder interferometer, and that's exactly what we want to see, how we can realize such a situation for our atoms. So thanks a lot for watching today, and see you in the next class.